We're going to take a different kind of stress test right now because six in ten Americans report feeling stressed out by the economy. Folks have questions about how to cope, and you have been sending us via website and Twitter. Now let's get some answers from peak performance strategist and good friend Tony Robbins. Thank you very much, Tony, Thanks, Great to see for you. being here. We saw it with Diane earlier. She was up and she so, showed the postcard of America, the ten cities, people that had good jobs, yeah. and now they find themselves living intense. They are just so much anxiety out there. And a lot of people are asking, why is this happening to me? Why? I, I think it's happening to all of us um, and in varying degrees, obviously. I mean, this is a season. And if you study history, you look at every 80 year cycle, we go through economic cycles, business cycles, and we're in it. So to be surprised that it's winter, unfortunately, we all got surprised, but we mm -hmm. shouldn't be. Now, you know, today we're seeing, you know, new information coming out. We're looking at the stock market that seems to, you know, back up for the year. And people are saying, well, gosh, you know, construction's up. But if you get yourself all excited and think it's all just over, I think you're making a big mistake. We're going to have a lot more tests now. The economy's got a lot more challenges to go through. So the secret is, what are you going to do? And the answer is, you're going to have to get stronger mentally, emotionally, physically. You're going to have to have a strategy on how to do well in this type of time so that you don't have the delusion that the events are controlling how you feel. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds overly simplistic, but think about it. You know, when things were going well, we're 5% of the population of the world, the U.S. We have 50% cocaine use of the whole world. We have, you know, we spend as much money on alcohol as we do on the defense budget. We're in a place, we have 15 million people that are diagnosed as being depressed and we're spending a half a billion on Prozac. We have the highest level of teen suicide in our history. That was when things were going well a couple of years ago. So things aren't what they seem. Sometimes your worst day can be your best day if it produces a change. And that's part of what I'm focused on. A lot of folks, I said, okay, all those things that you say, it's, it's, it's bad enough. But when you're older... Yes. It's, it's, it's even heightened. And we had a lot of people saying, what do you do if you're older and you're trying to start that second career? How do you positively look at the aging process? Well, it's very much like an athlete, so I can relate this to you. You know, you were saying off the air here about, you were listening to my tapes years ago, mm -hmm. and what you do. It's really about five things. First thing you've got to do is you've got to condition your mind. You've got to feed and condition it all over again because it gets set in its ways. Uh, when I was sleeping in my car, when I was kind of starting my career, trying to figure out what to do, you know, there was no internet. I'm ancient enough to remember those mm -hmm. days. So I was going to the library and I was reading biographies and I was reading people that were, t you know, in concentration camps and how do they get it through? So you've got to feed your mind because if you don't, it's going to be fed by everything around you. Secondly, you've got to take control of your body. The body and the mind are combined. If people don't face their fear at any age, right. it's over. So what you have to do is understand fear is physical. And if you can get yourself working out intensely, the blood's circulating, you're pushing yourself, whether it's lifting weights, running, you get a shift. Third thing you need is a role model. And sometimes that role model is other people that have succeeded in an environment like this. And sometimes it's you. Because we've all faced crisis before. I know a couple mm -hmm. of years ago you faced a crisis with cancer. I faced it when somebody said I had a tumor in my brain. You know, how you dealt with that and how you turn it around, following that plan, and then finding a way to help other people, no matter how tough it is for you, if you can get out of yourself and find other people and what they need and help them, the whole game changes for yeah, you. Yeah, when you find service to others and you find There's that no you're question. the ones that you're helping. It'll shift your psychology. You said this is a great time to start a business, even yes. in this economy. Yes. And we had somebody who, uh, through vi who Twitter who said, any advice on how to stay focused and see your dream through and how to help when you are juggling six kids as well. So she started a business with her husband and she has six children yes. as well. I would say look for a great role model. And there's one... Um, uh, Ms. Justin, who's on Desperate Housewives, start at 42 years old. So you said older, mm -hmm. right? That's not that old, but older. Two children, right? Three jobs. Husband leaves her. She's got to figure out what to do to survive. She decides, I'm going to become an actress. Here's my first key. Don't do anything you don't love. Today, if we're all having to work harder than ever, maybe this is the time to say, you know, a crisis should be used. Maybe this is a time for me to see what matters most to me. She works for almost 10 years before I got her first job, speaking even a line. And then all of a sudden, 15 years later, she gets a few jobs. 25 years later, here she is, she's got True. two Emmys, right? So it's a process. If you want the instant answer, you look in the wrong place. But if you really want to make this thing move forward, make sure it's what you love, make sure you're focused on it every day, and figure out what the next step is, because here's what's going to make you happy. It's not the events becoming perfect, because they're going to vary. We're in winter. There are some sunny days in winter, and there are some cold days in winter. What you really need is to make progress. Progress equals happiness. If you can make a little progress physically, or in your relationship, or in your career, or in your ability, or in your skill, you're going to feel much more fulfilled. And when the storms come, you'll handle them. You'll be stronger. We're stronger than we think we are. A little bit stronger than we think we are. Repetition is a mother's skill. I know everyone's <laughs> looking for something new, but yes. sometimes you just have to keep repeating that and hearing that. It's like that. working out. Nobody want, everybody wants muscle, but nobody wants to work out. You've got to work out your mind and your body. Tony, thank you very much. I hope thank you help some folks. I know getting up sometimes in the morning people are like, 
What well, now? Can I just plant one with the seed? If you're thinking that the event's controlling, ask yourself this question. If I told you to decide in 10 seconds, what's the best thing that ever happened to you that would change your life in seconds, and what's the worst? The best most people would say is, I won the lottery, won $200 million. The worst they'd say is, I became paralyzed from the neck down. That's what studies show. A year later, which one of those two people you think is happier? The latter. No, neither. They're at the same happiness they were a year before. But three years later, the person who's paralyzed, the person who went through severe challenges, feels stronger. They lowered their expectations and they grew as a person. Their relationships are deeper and their perspective on life has changed. Those three things happen with extreme stress. And I tell people, if you've got extreme stress, use it. Don't let it use you. Well, thanks, Tony, for your perspective as always. We appreciate, appreciate it. Robert. Okay.